Hey guys, welcome back to Clash with Corey. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and speak up in the comments below because I do my best to respond to all of those. Uh, several of my subscribers have been asking me for base identification tips. Uh, trying to choose the right attack for the right base. And so, man, that's a really big, broad topic. And there's so many things to take into account. Basically, as you learn and master new attacks, you're going to get, you know, and as you get better at those attacks, you're going to be getting better at spotting the kind of bases that are susceptible to them. But nonetheless, we're going to take a look at five different bases for five different types of attacks. And we're going to take a look at why they were a good choice for the base that they were used on. So we're going to start out with my hit. Actually, I was really stoked about this one. Not a, It's like a tier one or something, so not a big deal. But I was really excited because I got to use the blimp uh, with a ground attack. It was really fun. But anyways, so let's go into this. First of all, we're going to notice a lot of this dead space in here. You see all that dead space that breaks up the base? That can be really beneficial for falcon pathing because when you have those dead spaces, you can take advantage of that and really determine exactly where your valks are going to go through the base. So from looking at that, I noticed this dead space right over here and then the one right in between these guys, and I figured I wanted to bring some valks in right here, valks and bowlers in there. To do that, I'm going to have to take out these buildings up here, these ones over here. So what I did is I put a queen wall up here and a king over here take out these buildings so I could get my Valks in there but and so if you look at the pathing through that base look at this Look where they're gonna path right through this core there's dead space all the way through to guarantee that they punch right out through the back of this base and you look at the back of this base everything's mostly reachable from a bowler bounce except for this stuff out here and this stuff over here. So I knew I wanted to do a falcon. So I went and made it happen. For this section over here, I thought, man, I want to bring a blimp. Pop it when it gets right over that inferno. And use a rage on it. And just take out that whole section. It works out really well. So let's go ahead and get into this attack. But that's why I picked falcon for this base. Was because of all that dead space in there. And I wanted to take advantage of that. So here we go, baby dragon down. Now I wanted it to go to here, to here, and I placed it in a stupid spot, or the baby dragon was just dumb because it went over there instead. Didn't take this out. That's all right, I'm still able to get a, a, a wizard over there and still get my king to walk the right way. So I'm gonna be able to drop my queen down pretty soon with her healers. Took five healers on this. Since I was saving a rage for those loons, I wanted to make sure I would not need a rage for the queen walk. So I gave her an extra healer. And it's not that heavy a fire over here anyways. Might have been okay with four, but I wanted to be on the safe side since I really wanted a rage for those loons. So we're starting to get the funnel built. Pop the kings. He was he was coming in close to range that single. I wanted to get those barbs out there and, and get that funnel just really cut out and taken care of. Now Valks are going to come in. And then Bowlers are going to come in over off the left. Right behind where the Valks are going to come in there. Kind of wanted my queen to walk around. But of course, you know, she walks the other way that you want her to. And she came inside. Not a big deal. I figured she'd take care of that hound eventually. Got a poison down on the loon. Got the Falcon coming in. Rage, heal, rage. And then another heal right on the back. And now I'm ready to bring that blimp in. Directly targeting that Inferno. So here it comes. With the rage pre-dropped. That way as soon as I pop it, they're already raged. Boom. Air defense. Inferno. Archer tower. Those level 8 max loons. The new max level. They are beasts. This base is done. The Valks bowlers went exactly where I said they would go. Because, I mean, this base, I mean, the pathing was just predetermined already. You know, it's just it's too good to pass up. Look, those max loons are going to walk right up to that other air defense and take it out with an air defense firing on them the whole time. Those loons are ridiculous. All right, I guess the queen helped with the air defense a little bit. But, yeah, those loons are freaking strong. They will get some serious stuff done. I'm definitely going to be looking for more bases in the future where I can bring in back-end loons and a blimp because it's pretty tough. So there we go. That's why I chose Falcon for that base. All that dead space really allowed me full control over where my Valks and Bowlers were going to path to. So let's look at this next example here. It's going to be Hex on number 30. So let's take a look at the base. 
One of the first things you probably notice is this CC is drawable from the outside of the base. There's several different ways you could probably take advantage of that, but how Hex chooses to do it is just send a queen walk right down this side, knowing that she's going to walk down that wall and she's going to trigger that CC and be able to kill it with the aid of a rage. So that's what he does. And, and you know, at that point, you look at the rest of the base, what else can you use? You could probably use all sorts of stuff, but you know what? You, you, I don't know if you really take out the queen from there. I guess maybe you do eventually. You don't get any air defenses. Uh, you do get the king, but you know what? What's easier than all that stuff is miners. As long as you take out the enemy CC, you can miner a base. You're going to have to play with comp and spells a little bit, but if you take out the enemy CC and trim the sides with heroes, you can definitely miner a base. So that's what he elects to do since his queen can take care of the CC from there. Got it on times two, just because I've already spent some time explaining the attack. Might slow it down when we get into the meat and potatoes, but queen walks take a little bit of time. Has to rage her up to deal with the enemy king. And she's still using the benefit of that rage to get through that a little quicker and get over there and pull the CC. You don't want to make too long of a walk before you get the CC because, you, you know, you definitely run the risk of having a time fail. All right, so we got that enemy CC getting targeted by the queen. None of those other defenses are targeting her, so she doesn't need a rage to get through that at all. She's got his king and his wall wrecker come down. The king to the right side of the wall wrecker, so that it walks along the outside of the walls of that base, just clearing that trash. And here comes in the main group of miners. He put that wall wrecker in a spot where it would tank for that first wizard tower and tank all those defenses on the way in. So you see that main group of miners is still untouched. Just now, they're maybe going to get targeted in here, but he gets a heal down for him anyways, and it finally pops out. He's got more max miners in there. He's going to rage through the core and the queen, freeze the queen, and a wizard tower. Excellent freeze. Another heal down on him over there, and if you look over there, his queen walk's still going. Uh, you know, another thing I forgot to mention is there was no air defenses in range of that side of the base, so it's a super, super safe side to walk your queen down. You know, probably not going to lose lose any healers to air bombs if there's no air defenses over there. You know, most of the time they got air bombs near air defenses to, to bust through hounds quickly, and uh, still got all his healers on his queen. Finally popped his queen ability, I think, just to take out some stuff faster but this base is wrecked spotted a good queen walk and then figured out an attack that would go really well with it and took out the base no problem it's excellent base identification from hex there let's look at johnny boy's hit on number 23 let's take a look at this base <clears throat> So first thing I notice about it is those those infernos are really deep. A lot of times you're seeing them on the edges now, really close, and on the opposite side of the town hall to, to try and limit the value you're going to get out of your wall wrecker. And not on this base, so it's definitely a good option to get a wall wrecker in there deep if you don't have a single target uh, hitting on you to get in there and go after those heroes. Now, you're really only going to get the queen from a core shot. Um, from over here and over here's where you get a lot of good value so what johnny boy likes to do is he likes to send in a kill squad two golems wrecker and queen into this core to go ahead and take out the core and you know enemy cc enemy queen all this stuff and he goes ahead and takes care of this enemy king up here by just suiciding his king and he's actually going to do that really early with a few wizards and that's going to set up this whole side of the funnel as well as kill that king and then he's going to hog the rest i think he's got room for like 26 hogs on the back end and uh he just really covers all his bases and it, it really turns out to be a very nice attack so let's see how it plays out he's going to bring in his king well some archers on the side buildings there first on the corner huts always want to make sure every corner hut is accounted for nothing hurts worse than a 99 percent fail except for maybe a wall wrecker glitch fail yeah so he's got his king and wizards coming down and you know what i just realized i haven't released that video yet i need to do that i already taped it so he's got his king coming down in there and takes out that enemy king, pops his ability with some wizards, and he's going to take care of that whole funnel over there after the king kill. Got two golems in there, carving in the funnel for the queen to come in behind that wrecker. And those golems are still tanking for the wrecker. The wrecker hasn't even been touched yet. 
You don't see a health bar because it's not getting touched. Those defenses are still on the wrecker. It's still not being targeted. They're targeting a golem right behind it. He thought it was getting ready to go down. He thought it was locked onto by the singles, so he dropped the rage. And then when he realized it had full health, he popped it open so those Valks could come out in the rage and take out that core. So he got the king kill. He got the whole core, you know, taken care of. His queen's still up, still has her ability, and he brings in the hogs to support her. And you can see he's just got a nice little C shape left of this base. And he had four heals for these 26 hogs. He's going to pop his queen pretty soon. There we go. And he brings in... He, I think he must have known there was going to be some giant bombs out there by the Teslas. Because he likes to use the heal out there. And it's a good call. And last heal is going to cover a giant bomb and the entry up to those last few defenses. And this base is wrecked. And the hogs split to the wizard tower first. Nice. That's what you want to see. And of course, he already had cleanup down after the fact. And hogs are now helping too. So, you know, really good job identifying that just one kill squad. Not going to take out both heroes. So he went ahead and separated his king. Used his king to kill the enemy queen. Which really helps the hog at path. It helps the hogs if they don't have a freaking king chasing them all over the whole base. You know, if he would have had to deal with the king, I don't know if he would have got that. Uh, so really smart doing that. And really smart doing it first and having it help with the funnel as well. Really good base identification from Johnny Boy there. Now let's take a look at this attack on number 18 by Nightwing. And this is, this is a really cool attack. So, I actually saw this, and I was thinking about doing something like this, too. But he probably executed a lot better than I would have, so it's probably a good thing he called it first. Anyways, number one thing you're going to probably notice is all these air defenses are on the bottom. And the town hall's way up here. So, you can definitely re enter a wrecker on any of these sides of the base you want. Because the town hall's over there. And you could take out all these air defenses. You get in there deep enough, you're going to get a CC draw, queen kill, uh, all that good stuff. So if you can take out all the air defenses, enemy CC, and, you know, hopefully a sweeper, you, the, what you can do with the rest of the base, you can do a couple things. You could do a mass baby dragon uh, with some loons, or you could do just straight up mass loons. So with how much the base he has left, he likes to go with mass loon. With the mass baby dragon, you probably want better pathing than what's left for that. With mass loon, you can definitely manipulate more, you know, different drops to, you know, kind of create the pathing you need. I think with a mass baby dragon, you want to have a nice thin path already left through the base, anyways. So he uses king on one side, kind of to, you know, really start that side of the funnel as well, and then queen off to the other side, but. And then a baby dragon over on the side so that the queen moves to into the right after she takes care of that elixir storage there. Got the wrecker coming in. It's under some heavy fire, but it's going to get through that next layer of wall break, which is all we need to get in there deep enough to get at the enemy queen and all of those air defenses. So finally, his queen circles back around and decides she wants to go into the base. Valks have already taken out the enemy queen, so that part of the objective is done. They're going to go in and get a few hits on it on that expo as well. So this queen's going to be able to step up, use her ability, take out that expo, the baby dragon, the air defense, and then she's finally going to hop over and take out that sweeper. And that's huge, because then he can come in from the opposite side with mass loons, not have to fight a sweeper. So for this portion of the raid, he had, I believe, three hastes. Uh, he's got a rage and two heals. You know, you don't have any hounds out in front tanking uh, or clearing those traps. So, especially if you're dealing with a bunch of wizard towers in the back end, if you're doing mass loon, you got to make sure you have at least, i say at least one heal. But if you're dealing with as many wizard towers as this, you definitely want to be looking at more like two heals. All right. And coming into this final section, he's going to use that last heal. He has a ton of loons left over. Thing to remember when you're doing mass loon attacks is 
you don't have any lava puffs to clean up behind you so if you're gonna do no hounds just loons you have to bring plenty of your own minions i don't remember how many he had on this i'm gonna guess like 13 or something you know what i mean so you're looking at least 10 hopefully something more like 15 minions because you don't have any puffs to help you clean up you gotta bring your own minions and you gotta get them down right after those loon drops if you wait until all the defenses are down to, to put your cleanup you're gonna have a time fail so you gotta get in the habit as soon as you drop those first groups of loons or or hogs whatever you're doing make sure you get clean some cleanup down right behind that first group to just really start working on that cleanup immediately but really good job from Nightwing there identifying he could take out those objectives and just mass loon the rest and he had a ton of loons left too it was a grip of loons left over so this next one we didn't have any of the types of bases I wanted to see for the next one in Town Hall 10 so I, I grabbed the Town Hall 12 example because it's still a really good example so if you look at this base you're gonna notice we got all the air defense over on this side and Really, you know, so obviously none over on this side, no air defense on this side. So you can really run some healers down this side without getting targeted by those air defenses. Then if you look on this side over here, you're going to see there's no splash damage buildings that really can reach that edge. You know, I mean, this one kind of can, but it's going to be addressed by a core group anyway. So no splash on this side, you know, until you get to like a mortar back here. But who cares about a mortar? Nobody cares about a mortar. So what we can do is run bowlers and witches down the side with no splash damage, and they're going to do really well because there's no wizard towers, bomb towers to take out those skellies. And so that group's going to do really well down there. And on this side, you can still use bowlers and witches, um, but since there's no air defenses over there, you can put two healers on them to keep that group alive for the whole raid. So he notices those two sides, and he goes ahead and then cooks up a bowler witch attack um, that uses exactly what we were just talking about there. Got wizard, witches and bowlers on the side with no splash. Healers, witches and bowlers on the side with no air defenses. So he gets his corner groups in first. Has to get that funnel built before you drop the core group. You know, your bowler witch hits at town all 10. Definitely not always going to be this army comp. It depends on the base. Sometimes you don't have any healers on the side. Uh, sometimes you need a few giants out in front to cover your first few drops. Sometimes you have, both groups have healers on the side. You know, it, it's going to look different depending on the base. But for this base, picked a really good composition. You know, another thing you got to look at is can you get through the base with a wrecker and one or two jumps? This one, he could have done it with one jump, but he didn't know how deep that wrecker was going to get in there, so he had two jumps just in case. So if you look at this top side up here with those two healers on it, it's going strong. You know, when it when the witches or bowlers do manage to get targeted instead of those skellies, the healers are healing them right back up. Core group's doing great too. You know, uh, still got a full health queen with her ability, still has a rage spell. He ended up swagging a rage on this and pre-swagged that jump that that no troops used or needed. So, uh, you know, and when you have leftover spells like that, it's a pretty good indication that you picked the perfect attack for that base. You know, you don't want to be throwing the same attack at every base. You want to be using the right attack for the right base. And when you get better, you know, practice with all those different attacks, definitely. Because even if you pick the great base for it, if you put your troops down in a horrible, stupid order, or you time it wrong, you know what I mean? You're not going to crush the base, you know, if you're not, you know, doing it proficiently. So you got to practice them. And the more you practice them, uh, you know, the better you'll get at spotting kind of bases that those attacks are work for, you know? The more you succeed and well and honestly the more you fail with something every time you fail you learn from those or at least i do you know uh especially my failures i'm like god what went wrong i watch those you know i watch my three star replays a lot but i watch my fail replays even more because i want to know what did i do wrong what could i have done differently do you know what i mean and learn from that sort of stuff and you'll definitely learn the execution part from that but as far as base identification it's you know i mean yeah videos can help give you hints and stuff like that but you know a lot of it's getting good with those attacks and getting familiar with those attacks and the more experience the more fc's the more war attacks you do you're gonna get better at base identification too so i hope this was a help for you guys uh let me know let me know if it was okay in the comments below this is the first base identification video i've tried to do so you know let me know let me know how it was the good or the bad uh i can take it trust me and 
you know, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I always enjoy making videos for you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.